bed. He said it on CNN and MSNBC and Fox in the last three days. He's thinking the same way I am. We have got to go after the real people and protest them, not capitalism and private property rights as if that's what's making America fall apart. Insider corruption teamed up with government is what's allowing this. So Dallas, occupy the Fed. I want to see thousands out there. This is so exciting. I need everybody's help. Sorry, go ahead, Matt. Hey, and then another thing on people that think their First Amendment's not being taken away. This made national headlines in Fremont, Nebraska. Uh, ACLU is getting involved. Uh, they they banned a sixth grader girl from wearing a rosary to school. Yes, and now uh, not just in that school but in others. I mentioned it earlier. They're saying the cross itself is not allowed because of separation of church and state. But then they're going to let any other religious group have their symbols. It's just Christianity being targeted. And that's your individual person. It's part of your religion. And now they're saying that uh, I've seen the school uh, handout. They had it online this morning. It's any necklace with a cross or beads on it. Well, I mean, so so now if gang members wear red baseball caps, you can't wear those in public. Uh, or now if gang members wear Reebok tennis shoes, you, or if gang members drive black Mercedes, you, you you can't drive a black Mercedes. This is all about making us all guilty. And then can I make a comment about Bill O'Reilly? I know you talked about this for about five years, that OnStar ballot traction, and they... They're taking it to court after you even cancel the program. Yes. Uh, it, it's funny how Bill O'Reilly takes two minutes of fame and say he's the one who uh, pulled the plug on, on Star, and it was actually people like you and the other groups that support you and everything else. Well, we have more listeners and viewers than Bill O'Reilly. Conservatively, 10 million people watch us a week alone on YouTube. That's one platform. Uh, upwards of 3 million a day now on AM and FM, uh, Sirius XM. And global shortwave, and that's conservative, 3 million a day. Uh, over 1 million views on InfoWars and Prison Planet combined a day. You know, top drudge links. He's a legend in his own mind. But I'm glad that Bill O'Reilly would actually do something good for a change instead of promoting value-added taxes and sales taxes and austerity and calling that conservative. Uh, so, I mean, good. Let him take credit for exposing OnStar. Good. Let him. I don't care as long as they're not doing it. We'll be right back. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. A very wealthy U.S. citizen is predicting that in 2011, we will witness the most important day in America in more than 50 years. He says it will change everything about our lives. The way you shop, travel, invest, educate your children, and even how you take care of your health and your own family. Now, this man has made some outrageous predictions over the years. The crazy part is, he's usually right. You see, he predicted the collapse of GM, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and America's biggest mall owner, General Growth Properties. In fact, Barron's called his work a dire prophecy. Recently, he created a video, which you can watch online for free, detailing his biggest and most important prediction yet. And it's a real eye-opener. I can't stress this enough. You should at least watch this free video online today. He explains everything you need to know, including simple steps you can take to protect yourself. You can find the video at www.endofamerica3.com. That's endofamerica, the number three, dot com. Watch the free video at www.endofamerica3.com. That's endofamerica3.com. Alex Jones here with vital information concerning our nation's fragile food supply. Folks, there are some truly dangerous trends forming, and I think it's important for my listeners to do three things right away. Number one, study the past. History really does repeat itself. Number two, learn to spot the dangerous food shortage trends. Number three, take decisive action. A perfect storm is brewing or a global food crisis. That's why I'm telling everyone to read the new book, Rising Prices, Empty Shelves. Warning signs that trigger the deadliest famines in history. Don't get caught unprepared when the crisis hits. This book is only available at risingpricesemptyshelves.com. You'll also get a free copy of Supermarket Survival, How to Cut Your Grocery Bills in Half. Again, that website is risingpricesemptyshelves.com. That's risingpricesemptyshelves.com. Hundreds of nations have fallen to tyranny in the last century alone. This is our last chance to not relive history. As we're finishing off this agenda, uh, they'll be pulling the rug from underneath Americans at home. I have tremendous influence on our president and Congress. 
And they really are calling the shots. I think it's incumbent upon all of us as American citizens to pay attention. Fall of the Republic identifies the enemies of our nation. The criminal offshore cartel hell-bent on destroying sovereignty and on its ashes constructing world government. Tim Geithner, Bernanke, they're arsonists. They're asking for more matches. And the Congress is saying... Who do we make the check out to? Today, it seems like nobody does care. And right now in Washington, D.C., we have seen a fall of the Republic. Get your copy of Fall of the Republic on DVD at Infowars.com or watch it online right now in super high quality at PrisonPlanet.tv. watching right now and while we take some calls i'll have jaron roll the video in the background for prisonplanet.tv viewers if you go to infowars.com the headline is exposing internal checkpoints nightly news report and i'd forgotten that 100 miles into the texas border on every major road now they've added a bunch of them they got them all over the country vermont you name it they've got these checkpoints and they wanted to bring they were bringing drug dogs onto every vehicle uh, in the lane that we were directed into. And I went over and you know, had a camera up in the front of the RV, and they came over and said, turn it off. And I said, no, it's my First Amendment. And then the other guy came over and said, mind if I search? And it's like a trick question. You say, no, like, no, you're not going to search. And then I make the sarcastic comment, no, I don't violate, mind if you violate my Fourth Amendment. My wife's like, you're going to let him on? I'm like, no, I'm being sarcastic. I open the door up, and I say, oh, you're going to violate my Fourth Amendment because they're armed guys with guns. I'm saying I'm not consenting, but I'm not going to resist them so they can tase me. Have you seen how many videos there are from these internal checkpoints with Pastor Anderson and others where they say, turn your camera off and he won't? So they drag him out and bash his head open and, be, and taser him over and over again. And I was going to have more of a confrontation, but you can hear one of my daughters go, I'm scared. And so I just didn't want to give them the scene they wanted. I, I think I handled it just right. And I know the crew thought it was great. Uh, Richard you know, thought I handled it just right. Uh, but I'd like people to go onto the YouTube channel and give me your comment. Uh, they asked him if he was a citizen, and he answered yes. All right, telling off the man, Alex, you're the best. Treasonous bleepers, they shame us all. Laugh out loud at anyone that listens to Jones and takes any of his baloney. He moans on about seriously. And he goes on to say, I'm a hillbilly. You can't sue bleep, Alex, if you waive your rights. You have no lawsuit. I, I didn't waive my rights. I uh, can't believe you told him it was okay to come in your vehicle, and your wife is actually the one who asked you what in the world you were doing, letting them come in. I, I didn't let them in. He said, mind if I come on in? And I said, no, meaning, meaning it's, it's a trick question. And I saw him start running around. I went, oh, no, I don't mind if you violate my Fourth Amendment, being sarcastic. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm being sarcastic. Then I went and said, oh, you're going to violate my Fourth Amendment. Uh, it continues here. I live in the UK and the cops here will back right off. You start talking about your rights. I personally think your approach was rather appropriate. Since if you started shouting at them, getting in their face, they would tase you and arrest you in front of your family. They are not the real enemy anyways. It's the illegitimate Bank of England, the Federal Reserve, and not a few fluoride head ex-military police thugs out to hurt people. And my experience is a lot of the military guys actually know what's going on. I mean, 75% of all military donations last election, now it's 76% this election, are to Ron Paul. So that really illustrates they, that more and more they know what's going on. And, and, and my issue was their cover is the U.S. citizen thing. Their cover is the U.S. citizen issue. They're really looking for drugs of cowboys that aren't paying their cut. That's what government calls people that don't launder it through U.S. banks. They call them cowboys. Okay, let's go back to your calls. Again, thank you for holding. Uh, let's go ahead here and talk to Alex in Washington. Alex, welcome. Axel. Uh, yeah, Axel. <laughs> uh, hi, Alex. I like your show. The uh, Did you see the front page uh, drug report where, uh, uh, where Six Bucks is talking about uh, you donate $5 to them and they're going to send it to a uh, uh, fund to where they loan it to uh, small businesses? No, I didn't see the drugs report. Uh, be specific. I mean, I did see it, but I didn't see the article you're talking about. What specifically are they saying? Well, the article was saying that uh, Starbucks is uh, that what they're going to roll out as campaign November 1st to uh, have uh, everybody 
donate to, or ask people to donate five dollars to their foundation. Their foundation is then going to take it and they're going to loan it to or give it to a financial institution so that way they can loan it to small businesses. The question that I have the, 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 that comes up immediately on this is, well, so if it's a loan, so who gets the five bucks when it gets paid back? Look, it is look the the mega. This is all just part of total disinformation, but people are going to pile in to do this because yuppies believe in the system. They believe in trendiness. They like to call a small uh, coffee a tall. They like to call a medium a grande. They they like it, and so it creates the illusion that big banks don't have money to loan small small companies. Big banks are more flush with liquid cash. They've been sitting on the tens of trillions uh, of bailout money, and, and I haven't seen that report. Will you guys print that? Starbucks to take donations uh, to give to banks to loan back. I mean, this sounds like classic globalist activity. And then, yeah, then loan it back at interest when the banks are already getting at lower than 0% uh, government taxpayer money. I mean, the banks are already getting our taxpayer money and then refusing to loan it out. And now they're saying, give money. And then and then Starbucks, this big globalist Illuminati company. Uh, yeah, there it is. Starbucks to begin collecting donations to stimulate U.S. job growth. And uh, sure enough, it says, wow, print that for me. Sure enough, it says give five dollars to them or more and that uh, it will create a bank to then loan it out. Boy, I tell you. That is just incredible. Jaron says he's printing it now, but it was actually in my economy stack. I must have missed it uh, earlier. Uh, but, uh, w sir, what's your take on this? Well, I, it occurs to me that, you know, if there's a, if, if people are concerned about uh, about getting business getting businesses more money, you know, it'd be, it'd be far more efficient to just walk into your local small business and give them five bucks. It'd be much so better to go gonna... buy their products. It'd be much better to call to cut their taxes. Exactly. That's the... Uh, Exactly right. They'd be, they'd be far better off doing something like that than, than they would be donating it to to Starbucks to go to a foundation that's gonna that's gonna give it the you know give it away in the, in the form of a loan, which just seems uh, ridiculous. No, but what instead, other? instead, what they're doing is is the idea is oh, a big mega corporation like Slave Bucks putting all these local businesses out of business, engaging in all this manipulation. Uh, putting all this Illuminati symbolism all over everything, they're going to collect your money and then they'll have a bank loan it back to you. When again, the banks are refusing to loan to small businesses even when they have good credit. And if they do, it's at high interest rates. This is asinine. This is completely asinine and ridiculous. And I cannot believe that this is actually happening. It's something else. Uh, another thing on the, on the Occupy the Federal Reserve the uh, if there's not one in the area, I was thinking about this. What if everybody did what Herman Cain suggested on Friday is to call the Federal Reserve and ask them questions? That was his suggestion. No, no, no. Uh, now, now you're being sarcastic. Now, uh, of course, because they, you know, if you go on their property, they have security guards come out and try to threaten you. They try to say no cameras, and then they'll try to put their hands on their guns. And I'm going up there Friday, and last time I was there, they. You know, they were kissing our rump because they didn't want to get any attention on themselves in the media. When you're by yourself, though, they'll try to intimidate you. Uh, so it's going to be a piece of cake with all of us there in solidarity. But you're right. We should start flooding all the Federal Reserve Banks with daily phone calls, letting them know that we're aware that they are the hijackers of the government, and that they are the enemy. Well, ask them where the money went. Ask them to define what a dollar is. I mean, Bernanke won't even define what a dollar is. A dollar is apparently what a dollar will buy. Well, is he talking about a 1910 dollar, or is he talking about a dollar in uh, 2011? It's the it's the same issue I had with uh, with um, with a Roseanne Barr when she said we'll put a salary cap on everybody at 100 million dollars. Well, what's a dollar? I mean, we we haven't even defined that uh, define our terms yet. So, is a hundred million dollars in 1910 to 10 valuation, or is a hundred million dollars valued today? Not only that, I mean, uh, you know, it, it seems ridiculous to put a, a, a cap on a, on a CEO when they can have an expense account with a billion dollars a year and have a salary of a, of a dollar a year. I mean, it, it just seems kind of like a, the, uh, I mean, a, a, you know, kind of a, well, look, a, a fake statement. Look, the big mega banks and the Warren Buffetts and the Bill Gates is running around. They've put their hundreds of billions.